together we're going to begin finding the arc length, area, even volume of some figures that have circular shapes in them. Let's begin with this first page. A lot of this is review. Some of the ones on the bottom will look a little challenging and different. We already did arc length. Remember that arc length, we said, was a fraction of the circumference. So it's going to be this angle, which is the same as the arc. So the angle or arc divided by your entire 360 around times your circumference, which is either pi d or 2 pi r. And you can use either of these circumference formulas depending on what they give you. So we go over here. They do give me the radius, so maybe I will do angle divided by 360 times 2 pi r. Maybe I'll use that one. So here's my 150 divided by 360 times 2 times pi times 3. And then what I'm going to do is multiply out the numbers. 150 divided by 360, enter, I like to do that, times 2 times 3, times 3 times 2, the order doesn't matter, 2.5. Notably, I left out the pi. I don't want to multiply out pi, but I do need to include it in my answer. This is linear units. It's a line. Okay, it's a curve, but it's basically a string bent, uh, and so it's going to be linear units, which is feet. Over here, 45 divided by 360 times 2 times pi times the radius, which is 8. So I'm going to do 45 divided by 360 times 16. 2, don't forget the pi, minus. We also have area. When we have shaded area pictures, this is the way I always think of it. Identify the biggest shape. So then you're going to have your big shape's area, and you're going to subtract away the unshaded area. So we have to identify the shapes that are shaded and unshaded, and in order of size, we're going to be adding or subtracting them in or out of the picture. Starting with the big one. So that's going to be the big circle, pi r squared, minus a little circle, pi r squared, so pi times 14 squared, that's the big guy, minus pi times, and the little one is 7 squared. Well, 14 squared is 196 pi, and 7 squared is 49 pi, and we add these the same way we would add variables or radicals. They are like terms, so we add or in this case subtract, and we're going to get 147 pi. You can multiply out the pi. For me, it's easier not to, so I'm not going to. It is area centimeters squared. Moving on. Big shape here is a square. Notice from here to here is a diameter. Okay, So that diameter means it's going to be the same going from this side of the circle to this side of the circle through the center. So now I know that since these are both diameters, they are the same. So that distance is 10. Go over, this distance is 10. So 10 times 10, that big shape is 100. And now I have to subtract away this unshaded area. Trying to think of a way to find these four little shaded areas is next to impossible to come up with. The way that we do that is we subtract out the part that we don't want. So we're going to subtract out pi r squared. So 100 minus pi times, well, our radius here, if the whole thing was 10, then my radius is 5. 5 squared, 100 minus, I'm going to put that 5 squared in front. It looks better, 25 pi. And while I get that looks strange, that's going to be your most exact answer. Can you multiply that out? and subtract? Sure, but it's pi, so you're going to have a decimal, so why not leave it as the most exact answer? There are no units here, so I'm just going to do units squared, number five. So we come down to this guy over here. Sorry, don't worry about what's underneath. 
um, big circle minus little circle, just like this one. Well, my big circle is pi 6 squared minus, subtract out the little unshaded circle, and that's pi times radius, which is 2 squared. That's 36 pi minus 4 pi, and that's 32 pi. Go back for my units, centimeters squared. Come over here to number 6. So for number 6 over here, okay, so I have this little wedge shape. It's probably easier to just go for the wedge shape in this case, and this is a sector. We did these a few weeks ago, I think. Um, and if we didn't, it's very similar to finding the arc length. For arc length, you wanted this piece of the circle, so we did fraction of the circumference. For a sector, you want this pie-shaped piece of the circle, so we are going to get a fraction of the area this fraction of the area. So it's your central angle over 360 times the area. 60 over 360 times pi radius squared is 8 squared. Plug that right into the calculator. Uh, let's see, 60 divided by 360 times 8 squared. 10.66666, so 10.7 pi any units? Nope. Unit squared. Some of us might recognize that as two-thirds, and of course you can use that if you want to. Okay. Moving on. The back. So here we have solids. So these solid figures are a cylinder and a cone, and we're going to find the volume for them. So the way that we find the volume of a cylinder like many other three-dimensional shapes, this top piece here is a base. There is a matching base on the bottom that they're just not showing us, but you know that it's there, like if it were a can. So when we have a figure that has these bases that are parallel like this, you're gonna find the area of that base. So our volume formula starts with pi r squared, because we're gonna find the area of this circle. So that pi r squared is the area of the circle times h. I think of it as fill down. Area, fill down. Pi r squared, h. Okay. So we're going to do these top two problems because that's the formula. V is equal to pi r squared h. Volume is pi times your radius is 4. Your height is 12. So in your calculator, I would multiply the numbers out see what we get there. 192 pi, I just put the pi in my answer, um, km cubed. Remember volume is units cubed. This guy over here, volume is equal to pi r squared h. I write the formula over every time for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's going to help me memorize it. I get it. You can just refer to it now because we're home, but it will help me memorize it in case I ever need it for something and I don't have it available. Second reason is I just like to plug in pi. My radius, 2 squared, and my height is 10. Well, that's 4 times 10, so that's 40. 40 pi inches cubed. The other formula I'm dealing with is the volume of a cone. So now this cone, recognize it has a circle for its base, and then it comes to a point. It's also a right cone, meaning from that point, it comes straight down perpendicular to the center, and then there's your radius, and it makes a right angle. So it's called a right cone, as opposed to maybe it being like slanted, right? Then that wouldn't look good, but we're going to stick with this right cone. And when that happens with a figure, notice how we have the pi r squared, so here's your circle, fill with your height, so that numerator is the formula from before, divided by 3, and that's what it's going to be. When you have a shape that comes to a point, find the base, fill with the height, divide by 3. So coming down here, the volume is going to equal pi r squared h divided by 3. So pi 
times my radius squared, 12 squared, times my height, 24, divided by 3. Let's see what that's going to be. 11.52. Don't forget my pi feet squared. This one over here, pi r squared h, comes to a point, so divided by 3, and volume is equal to pi. Radius is 8 squared. My height is 16 divided by 3. Okay, so I'll do one of them here with the calculator. So I'm going to do 8 squared times 16 divided by 3. So that's 341.3 or one third pi yards cubed. We can also do math frac turn it back, which I call math under enter. And you could say that that is 1024 divided by 3 pi yards cubed. Sorry, see it all now? Yards cubed. Okay, so we could do that. But honestly, this one, at least you know what it is. That should be a cube that looks like a three, but it's cubed. That's it. So 341 and a third pi.